The Gumshoe title is the latest Triumph Seal as a part of the Witch Queen expansion in Destiny 2. I have just completed mine and I want to show you how long it took me and how you can also get it done quickly. I'll have a running total of how many hours each Triumph took me so that you can have a rough idea yourself. Timestamps will be in the description if you want to see a certain Triumph and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Destiny content. There are 9 total Triumphs to complete including completing the Collections badge. Let's start with the two easiest ones, Lepidopterist and the No Peeking Triumphs. To complete these you will need to collect all 10 Lucent Moths and close all 10 Darkness Rifts in the Throne World. The Lucent Moths were released 2 per week, but now that all of them are released, you can get both of these Triumphs done in around an hour as they are not difficult at all. There are a ton of guides for the locations of each of these on YouTube to help you out. Next we have the Of Queens and Worms Triumph, where we have to complete the exotic quest for the Parasite Grenade Launcher that only unlocks once you have completed the Witch Queen campaign. It is a relatively easy but long 17 step quest that should take roughly 3-5 to five hours, but I'm sure a lot of you have already got this one unlocked. Report Reverse Lure is the quest for the exotic glaive. This is found in the evidence board and only unlocks once you have completed all the other quests from here. If you haven't unlocked all these quests yet, then you need to further progress your Witch Queen campaign. But all of these are pretty simple except for the one which involves crafting two wellspring weapons, but we'll get into that later. The actual quest for the exotic glaive is very quick and should take you no more than 30 minutes. The world champions quest involves defeating 50 champions in throne world lost sectors. Champions can be found in legend or master lost sectors. You will have to wait for the daily rotation of lost sectors to rotate back to the throne world. Once you get to the required power level, 1550 for legend, this triumph should not take too long at all. I was around 1565 when going for this and at the time it was the metamorphosis lost sector in Miasma that was active. There are 5 champions in this legend lost sector meaning I had to do it 10 times. The fastest time I completed it was around 4 minutes but some runs were definitely slower than others so I'm going to add an hour to the counter. This takes us to 7.5 hours for the first 5 out of 9 triumphs. The next triumph we're going to take a look at is Buddy Up. This just involves getting to rank 30 with Finch and claiming all the rewards. I'm not going to add any time onto here because it depends on how far you have leveled up and the time taken to level drastically varies from person to person. And if you have been playing anything Throne World related at all, you'll definitely be well on your way to reaching rank 30. The Master of Truth Triumph requires you to complete any campaign on Master difficulty. You can unlock replayable campaign missions from Finch by being rank 13. This is 1580 power level so I would recommend being at least 1565 but 1560 should be fine. If you're a solo player like me you might be thinking I can't do that on my own but you can easily find LFG groups using the Destiny app or the Bungie website. Just look at fire teams and find groups looking for people to run the master weekly mission. Join the fire team and you should receive an in-game invite. You shouldn't need to use a mic and just remember to be the right power level. Once you're at the right power level, this mission should take about 30 minutes but I'm going to add another hour to the total because some groups might be slower than others. Now before we take a look at the last most time consuming triumph, let's look at the collections badge. To complete the collections badge, we need to obtain all 9 throne world weapons, each piece of armour, the exotic glaive that we mentioned earlier and the 5 miscellaneous items. I have a video covering how to get each of these 5 items and I'll leave that in the description. All of this only needs to be done on one class. I will add no time to the total because a lot of these items are already covered in the other triumphs and once you have completed most of the other triumphs you should find the collections badge is either already completed or at least very close to being completed. The armor comes from Finch as you rank him up, the exotic glaive comes from the quest and some of the throne world weapons also come from Finch and for the others that aren't wellspring weapons well, those are very easy to come by from just completed activities in the throne world like defeating high value targets. And that brings us to our final triumph, Hardware of the Throne. This one took me the longest and it is the only one that requires any type of real grinding, depending on how lucky you are. We need to craft all 9 of the throne world weapons. These are all the legendary weapons in the collections badge. To unlock a weapons craftable pattern, we need to complete multiple deep tie resonance on each one. Let's start with the 4 Wellspring weapons. As you probably know, the Wellspring weapons are on a 4 day rotation with a different weapon dropping each day. In order to craft them, we need not only to obtain the weapons, but also get them to drop with deep sight resonance. Let's take a look at the crafting patterns to see how many we need. For Come to Pass and Tarnation, we need 2 of each, and for Fell, Taradil and Father's Sins, we need 3 of each. And the fastest way to get these to drop is from the Master Wellspring as they have a slightly higher drop rate than on normal. 
This activity is 1580 power and you should be at least 1560. You can unlock the Master Wellspring from Finch after reaching rank 18. As the Master Wellspring is not a match made activity, if you don't have a fire team, you can easily use one of the LFG methods I mentioned earlier as Master Wellsprings are one of the most popular things that people are looking to do. Of course, if you'd rather queue in the normal Wellspring, just note that it might take a little longer to get the weapon pattern unlocked. Obviously, as you can only get one weapon each day, this will take you a minimum of four days. However, this will also help with two of the miscellaneous collection badge items and also obtaining the weapons in the first place. The annoying part is the drop rate is still quite low. It took me four hours to get three deep sight resonance father sins to drop and about two to three hours each for come to pass and tarnation to drop two of them. That is a fair amount of grinding. So I'm going to add eight plus six, so 14 hours to the counter, bringing us up to a total of 22 and a half hours. But we've only unlocked the crafting patterns for four out of nine weapons. What about the rest? Well, you don't need to grind the wellspring for these. As far as I know, they, they can come from world drops. One of the best way they dropped for me was from the deep side tier 3 chests located in the throne world. But once you've started to claim the armor, it's going to be much less of a chance as the armor will be in those chests as well. By the time I was ready to craft the wellspring weapons, I was only missing one. The pointed inquiry scout rifle. I had only completed one out of three towards unlocking the pattern. Now since these are random drops, you might ask how can we farm them? There is actually a relatively efficient farm to get throne world deep side resonance drops excluding the four wellspring weapons of course. I made a video on this that I'll leave in the description of how to farm them so be sure to check that out if you are missing any of them. But it took me about three and a half hours to just get two of these scout rifles to drop. I got a ton of the other four weapons though, I guess I was just extremely unlucky and I have no idea why. But that brings a total for me of 26 hours to complete the seal which really isn't too bad if you think about it and you will make progress just from playing the expansion. The only real grindy part is unlocking the ability to craft the weapons. If I was starting this seal again with absolutely nothing, I would start with the Darkness Rift and the Lucent Moths because they are easy and they give you some nice XP for Finch. Then as early as you can, start grinding out the Master Wellspring activity for those weapons. Sprinkle in the two exotic quests if you haven't completed them already, and once you see one of the Lost Sectors in the Throne World available on Legend, I would knock that triumph out so you don't have to wait for it to go around on rotation just in case. Finally, I would finish with completing the collections badge if it isn't completed already, and then complete the campaign mission on master difficulty. That's just how I would do it, because I like to get the grindy stuff out of the way first. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and it gives you an idea of how long it takes to complete the seal, and you were able to learn a few things from this guide. On the left is a video about the miscellaneous items in the collection badge, and on the right is the Throne World Deep Sight Resonance Weapon Farm. Please like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more Destiny 2 content, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.